Hi, my name is Marty Mayberry. I'm a forestry supervisor at the City of Kingston, and I'm here to tell you more about City's forestry work. Welcome, welcome to Tell Me More, the podcast that keeps its cool by staying in the shade. Trees. They shade us, they clean the air, they provide food, and they look pretty. For as long as there have been humans, we've been writing poetry, stories, myths, and more, all centered on trees. In the era of a changing climate, trees have taken on new importance as an easy way to absorb greenhouse gases and mitigate the impacts of climate change. Kingston has a department within our public works focused on trees, and today we have Marty Mayberry, his supervisor of forestry, here to tell us more about what his department does and how the city is working to expand the tree canopy. Hello, Marty. Happy to have you on the show today. I know trees are a very valued piece of the community, and the job your team has is no easy one. Uh, to start, could you walk us through the city's forestry department? What is it? What are you responsible for? Hi, Autumn. Thanks for having me. Our, uh, our department is fairly small. We consist of 11 employees, eight full-time arborists, two tree inspectors, and a forest technologist, all of which are certified arborists and experienced in the art of tree care and the care of tree health. We, uh, we, consist, we consistently perform uh, tree inspections and routine maintenance on all of the city's trees, um, working primarily street side, parks, and uh, working to grow our canopy. Small but mighty team, eh? <laughs> yeah. So expanding the size of the tree canopy has clearly been a priority for both the city and your team in the last few years. Um, could you tell me a bit about how that's going? Are, are we seeing it expand? Yeah, we've seen consistent growth since 2012 after our initial formal inventory was completed upon the discovery of emerald ash borer in the city. Um, we continue to see growth currently... 21.5% of our surface area in the city is covered by trees, and that's within the urban growth boundary, and about 29% in the entire city boundary proper. Um, as our newly planted trees continue to grow, along with efforts from private property and the CRCA, we're going to continue to see growth for some time. Wow, so we're looking at nearly a third when you're talking about the entire city area. Um, come back to the emerald ash borer in a little in a little bit because that's that's interesting and also you know not good for the trees. Um, but I, I want to talk for a moment about the the inventory that you did because in doing some research for this episode, I found uh, the tree layer in the city's public facing GIS map system K maps for those of you that are interested. Um, it seemed like it showed every single tree in the city. That's something we track. It is. Yeah, we, we manage our entire canopy through an asset management database called Cartograph. And we have roughly 40,000 trees inventoried throughout our street side locations and parks, um, minus a few green spaces and some of our wood lots, which we are continue to grow on and we're going to add those to the inventory. Um, things that we track through our asset management program is the work we perform on the trees and any new plantings or impacts to any of those trees to create a little bit of a historic database to help us for future planning where we can uh, uh, encourage more growth as in new planted trees and, and actions on uh, just basically maintenance mitigation on individual trees and, and based on its history. Wow, that's a... A lot of data it really gives you kind of a clear picture of where we're at and and what work we're doing, what we need to do. Um, I mean, okay, so clearly we're planting trees um, and we need to plant more. <laughs> Could you tell me about what we do? What, what does planting for the city entail? What, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, we, we continue to plant um, and we will continue to plant for many years to go, um, always increasing our complement based on budget. Um, so essentially what planting is doing for our city and how we go about doing it is we, we consistently are looking for new locations and new ideas on how we can increase our canopy, planting being the one and only thing that you can do to increase the net volume of trees within the city so so a lot goes into our planting projects we generally start at the beginning of every calendar year for two plants within the season a spring and a fall plant oh, okay is there 
a big difference between the spring and the fall plant? Yeah, yeah, there is uh, as far as numbers go. Um, currently this year, we're going to be just over 700 planted in the spring and 1,200 uh, plus in the fall. Um, two different approaches for those plantings. When we do our spring planting, we're looking at more group plantings in some of park spaces, lower land areas, areas where, you know, the impacts to the summer heat may not be as hard on the trees. Right. So, you know, that we could also increase include areas with easy access for watering. Right. Um, typically, the trees planted in the spring are also smaller cal caliper. So we're looking at 40 mil caliper trees and, and a little bit more of a conifer complement as well. Um, the spring plant is our, our fall plant, sorry, is our biggest plant. Um, like I said, about 1,200 trees for this fall. And we focus more on our street side and formal part settings um, basically it, it, it gives us time for the you know through the fall and the winter to, to help with establishment of the trees and then uh, reduces our, our watering needs for that initial planting um, obviously the trees are, are watered as right. they are planted in and then uh, and we may get one or two cycles in before the end of the year and, and doing it these two ways sort of helps to ensure they'll be more successful once they've been planted yeah in. it definitely helps with establishment and then uh, which gives us good ground to move forward and, and uh, ensure that these trees uh, take off and, and survive and, and add to our canopy. Awesome. So with these plantings, what kind of trees are we planting and how do you determine the right ones for the city? I mean, there's a lot of different tree varieties out there. Yeah, I think right now we're, we're looking to be around 60 individual species um, that we're, we're currently actively planting. Wow. Um, you know, th those numbers may increase. We have uh, a mix of native and non-native trees and also uh, ornamental. Basically, we use ornamental trees that are used for locations where there's overhead hydro conflicts or tight spaces where we just don't have the space for a, a full-size shade tree. Right. Um, so, like I said, a lot goes into choosing a location and choosing the correct species for that location. You know, sometimes we hit the mark, sometimes we don't, but that's, uh, that's, that's the way these things go, and, and we rely on mother, mother Nature quite a bit to help us out. Did a trial and error too, I imagine? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, one thing within the city of Kingston is there's fairly shallow soil volume, so that's always something that we have to take into consideration. Um, and, and also... Uh, Street side locations, there's, there are many things that impact um, those locations, whether it be road salt, air pollution, um, vandalism, um, just, just close proximity to roads where, you know, trees can potentially end up being in the way to city operations and the operation and flow of any city. But we, we, we have uh, practices and, and principles that we base on that we, we kind of work around those uh, those situations. Yeah, it sounds like there, it would be a, a few more hazards for sort of an urban environment tree, but um, still important to kind of keep them keep them there where you can. Um, and I'd imagine with 60 different species, we get good biodiversity through that, but sort of helps to have a collection of different types of trees rather than just like three. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually a big factor in choosing uh, species for particular locations is we look at the diversity within a street, a park. Um, you know, tree planting in an urban environment is fairly linear. You're, you're planting in lines, you're, you know, you're, you've got restricted space where you're getting trees into being street sides, almost like a grid. So we want to ensure that we increase the diversity to, to help us protect from insect and pest disease. Um, like going back to the emerald ash borer, unfortunately in the past, uh, the practice was to plant, you know, two or three species um, at large volumes in, in new subdivisions. Right. And, and when we got into the, when emerald ash borer arrived um, in the city of Kingston and throughout Ontario, we really noticed how this was a failure and we needed to improve our di diversity so we could reduce those types of drastic impacts to, you know, whether it be single individual neighborhoods or even even parks. Wow. Okay. A lot of, lot of considerations to take into account then um, when planting. Um, so with the spring and fall planting, it sounds like that's primarily on city-owned lands, the parks, the green spaces, etc. Um, but a lot of the land in the city is privately owned. Um, how are we trying to get more trees onto those properties? 
Currently, we have a program running called the Neighborhood Tree Plant Program. And I, I'm, I imagine many people have seen the advertisements and, and heard the, the radio advertisements. Um, and what that is is a program where we make available 1,800 trees per sale, um, a sale in the spring, a sale in the summer, for residents to plant on private property. Um, so right now, within that sale, every resident that owns a property in the city of Kingston is eligible to purchase two trees at a subsidized rate, so $20 a piece. And we have 10 species that we've included. We picked those 10 species based on uh, they were common, people knew them, um, they do well in most environments. And we also created a variety with some ornamental trees and, and conifers. So currently there's there's three conifer species, seven deciduous, and two of those deciduous trees are, are more ornamental um, than chain trees. Very cool. Um, so we've had this program in place now for a couple of years. I think it started sort of 2021. Um, could you tell us, like, is it is it going to continue year over year? Is this kind of a, a permanent addition to the city? or? So, so we have committed to, to run it into 2024. Okay. Um, after that, we're going to look at the project and see if there's maybe some new ideas, mm-hmm. some new ways to get trees on, on private properties or work with homeowners or neighborhood associations um, to, to either increase trees going on private property or just some different ideas. Um, being that we've had this program running, this would be the third year. And we've offered relatively the same species of trees over the last three years. We want to look at maybe some changes that uh, could even help us improve uh, getting more trees on private properties. That makes sense. Run it for a couple of years, see what response you have, and, and reevaluate afterwards. Um, and so a friendly reminder for listeners, the next sale is coming up in July. <laughs> so if you'd like some extremely reasonably priced young trees, not seedlings, but trees that are ready to go, then uh, check back on the city's website in July for details. And that's been our sponsorship for this podcast. So we have the trees and we have the trees going in the ground. <laughs> Let's talk about maintenance because trees need some TLC throughout their lives, especially in an urban setting, as you sort of alluded to earlier. Um, what, what are the big maintenance challenges that your teams deal with? Well, the biggest maintenance uh, hurdle that we've had was dealing with EAB. Um, the Emerald Ash Corn. Yeah, starting basically like I had noted, uh, it's discovery right around 2012. Um, we ended up having to remove quite a few trees, which set us back a little bit, but we've now gained with our, our net plantings and replacements. So that was a big challenge. And we're always concerned about new pests and diseases moving into the city and, and impacting uh, our, our canopy without really our control. So so we're, we're our, our technical team is always looking for those, uh, you know, any new impacts. And we try to act in a reasonable and timely way to uh, to action those and reduce the impact. Uh, the mo- the latest would have been the spongy moth infestation that right. we had for, for about two years, um, 21, 2020, 2021, which didn't really impact the urban growth boundary as much as rural pockets. Okay. Um, as far as uh, long-term uh, impact from the spongy moth, it was fairly limited. You know, there, there were more trees probably on private property that were impacted than, than city property, and that's based just on species. Um, our, our maintenance is, is a big part of what our eight skilled labor arborists do every day. Right. Yeah. The, the, those are the guys on the truck every day, and they're out, whether it's pruning, um, removals when needed. Unfortunately, trees like people do age and, and become hazardous to the public and uh, in the overall function of the city. So, so we're... We're always looking um, to reduce and retain trees. But at the same time, it is a necessity that they have to be removed. We uh, we do have a great team that is quite skilled at uh, pruning and pruning for retention, which would be oh, okay. you know reducing a tree's growth to to reduce weight on the structure within the tree um, and, and improve its overall health and, and help retain it for for years to go. Uh, maintenance for young trees is also very important. So we're we're planting large volumes of trees every year. We now have to maintain these trees through juvenile pruning. That's what we call it. It's 
basically training the tree to belong in the city. Right. So so we're 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 training we're pruning for targets before the tree becomes that target type thing. So for street elevations, um, impact the overhead infrastructure right. where it exists, and uh, and just reducing impacts to the overall flow to the city, whether it be operational for garbage trucks, snow plows, uh, people using sidewalks uh, within our park spaces. Um, a, lot of, a lot of that maintenance is, is very important and, uh, and we continue to work on it to continue to improve our canopy. Do the young trees require more sort of focused work than the older trees, more established ones? It, 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 uh, I, I would say the mature trees require more. Okay. Um, bigger risk mm-hmm. with the tree trees. That's one thing about uh, trees is, is there is a little bit of risk whether they're in a park space or street side. Yeah. Um, they're unpredictable. Um, we are very trained and experienced in picking up on signs that trees give us to, to show that there may be an issue, whether it be internal decay, um, impacts like we have mentioned and talked about, it, diseases, insects. Um, so, so generally, we're, we're focusing more on mature trees, but we still have to maintain and, and like I said, train our young trees so they can belong and, and not become issues in the future. Wow. Lot, lot of things to protect them from and make sure that they, you know, can actually grow up and become nice little shade trees. Um, so do you have a favorite tree in town or one that's particularly interesting? Yeah, I, I do have a favorite tree. It's a bur oak on Barrett Street, Barrett Court, sorry, um, in the East End. And it's a 150 centimeter uh, bur oak that, uh, that's Age wow. at approximately two hundred years. Wow! <laughs> wow, that's a that's a big old tree. It's a beauty. I'm gonna have to swing by and check it out. <laughs> um, and is there anything I haven't touched on yet that you'd like to get out while you're here? No, I think we've uh, touched on all the important covered it all. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and thank you, listeners, for growing with us today. If you'd like to check out the Neighborhood Tree Planting Program, learn about threats to trees in Kingston, or see the map layers outlining the city's inventory, check out our show notes. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please consider rating us or subscribing. Ratings help us to reach a wider audience, while following or subscribing means you won't miss new episodes. Have a topic you'd like us to tell you more about? Please let us know. We're always happy to receive mail. Send us a note by emailing podcasts at cityofkingston.ca. Stay well, everyone. (laughs)